Hi everyone, welcome to our third video on going through this Skills USA project, the technical drafting project that involves drawing this metal top toy. So we're on our third one, which means we are going to be doing the cone in this video. Previously, we've done the housing and we have done the spin pin. So we have those two. Today, we're going to do the cone. So we're going to open up. We're on on shape and we're going to open up the battle top toy file. We are not creating a new file. Do not create a new file. Open the file that should have the housing in it and the spin pin. And it should we should also have the housing drawing which contains all the dimensions and details and our title block just like this and the one for the spin pin as well. Just like that. So we're going to create a new part studio where we're going to create this cone part. Here's the 3D version. Let's click on this plus down here and we click on part, create part studio. Before we do anything, we have to right click on part studio one and rename it to cone because that's the name of the part. Good. And now we can get started on drawing. So how should we go about this? Here are my thoughts on how I would do this. What I would probably do is make a fully solid filled in version of this cone. You see how it's open inside. I think what I would do is I would make it full. So I would create this circle, extrude it to make a cylinder and then loft it, use the loft tool to fill in this cone area. And then I'd use the shell tool, which is right here, to hollow this out. And then I could do some more extrusions to get these pieces in here too. So that's that's my thinking. So it's, it's gonna be pretty straightforward to be able to make that initial filled in cone. All we need to do is make this circle, extrude it, create another circle up here, as you can see, there's some circles up here and then loft from the top face of the cylinder up to the top circle. So I'll start a new sketch. And basically what I'll do is simply draw, I'll draw this circle, but while I'm at it, I'll also draw these, uh, this bump, bumpy array of sorts. So I've, I've started this sketch plane on the top plane. So now that, and, and you can see that as well, sketch one. So I'm going to hide the other planes. I don't need those anymore. Now I just have my sketch plane visible. So I'm gonna right click and click on view normal to plane. So I'm looking right on top of it. Now, drawing the circles, very simple. We need to find what the diameter of the circle is. Doesn't seem to be on here. Maybe it's on this one, yep, right here. So from top to bottom, of this cone and it says it right here there's the diameter symbol without the slash diameter 1.13 so let's get the circle tool going center point circle click on the origin we're going to click anywhere then we'll get our dimension click anywhere and we'll type in 1.13 because it asks for diameter So while I'm at it, I am also going to deal with these bumps here, that bump pattern. Now I don't need that right now, but I, I'm, I figure while we're still on this sketch, let's draw it. So what do we have here? Well, we have, it, it would be a pain to try to draw all, what does it seem to be? 24 of these circles. So what we can do is just make one, maybe this one right here and then use the circular array to gather that around. Now there also does appear to be, it does appear to be that the center of these circles is 0.45 away from this center. So what I'll do is I'll get another center point circle, any size for now, and then I will get my dimension tool Let's see, so if we had a circle here, it would be a radius of 0.45 because it goes from the center 
so is what would be the outer point. So we need to double that to get the diameter because in on shape it's always asking for the diameter. 0.45 times two, that ends up being 0.9. So the center of each of these circles is going to lie right on here. Very helpful. Well, now we can actually, uh, we can keep up with our circle tool and we can create this circle that seems to have a radius of 0 0.06. So right on this quadrant over here, you can see that I'm going straight out to the right. You can see that dotted line and I'm gonna lie right on this circle. So I know I'm snapping right there. I'm gonna click anywhere and dimension it properly. So just like before, this asks for a diameter, but we're given a radius. So we just need to double that. 0.06 times two to get the diameter, press enter, there we go. That's one circle. Uh, and we're only getting the, the right side of this circle. So we can use the trim tool to get rid of this other side over here. Let's see, where is it? That should be under, these are the modification tools. Here's trim. And we would just simply click on that side of the circle don't need any more. Cool, not too bad, not too bad. Let's get our circular array tool going then. That should be under modifications. Yep, here we go, circular pattern. Click on this piece of the circle, this arc. And it looks like we need 24 of these. So there, if you see right here, there's that three X that's saying how many, we're gonna have, we have three right now, we want to double click on that and change it to 24. Press enter. Now you're probably wondering why, why aren't all of them showing up? That's okay, once you click out of there, they'll all show up just like that. Okay, now what, what happened here? Why is it not quite where it's supposed to be? Ah, see, I made a mistake. Well, I didn't make a mistake. The circles are supposed to lie on this circle. The centers are supposed to lie on this circle, but we don't need it anymore. Because if you, if, let's zoom in a little bit. You can see there's this other kind of circular segment there. That's not part of this center. That's a different circle. So we don't actually need that circle anymore. I'm gonna click on it and delete it. What I do need what I probably should have done before is make this, this circle before. So that we have, a, we have this other circle that has a diameter of 0.97. Look anywhere, dimension it to have the diameter of 0.97. There, these are the sides that we're going to keep right here. So, we could go ahead and use the trim tool. Now these mistakes happen. We can go ahead and use the trim tool and try to trim everything, but I think that's gonna take a little too long. So I'm just going to control Z everything, not completely everything. See, I'm just going back, back, back. I'm actually, I'm gonna delete this before I do the circular array. And I'm going to make that diameter 0.97 this time. I should have done that before, 0.97. And then I'll use the trim tool to trim these parts. So this is all that should be left over. Now I'll use my circular array tool. So it's okay to make these mistakes. It happens. Just have to be prepared to fix them. We need 24 of these, just like we did before, and click out of there. There. Now, what we also don't need are, are the pieces of the arc that lie under these bumps. So how are we gonna make that nice and easy for us? Well, here's what I think we should do. Uh, I think I'm gonna trim, cause I don't wanna go ahead and trim all of these. It's gonna take way too long. But you see here, I have this one left over. And I don't, I, I don't want to go ahead and do this because that's going to take a while. What I could do instead is, well, I now have one of these. Well, I have a couple of these because I was demonstrating, but I have one of these left over. 
I could escape out of that trim tool and I could delete the rest of this circle. So yeah, we, we still have these gaps over here, but I still have this one and that one and that one, but I have this one. So I could use circular array on that piece as well. I could click on here, get another 24 of these, click out and yeah, there, there they are now. So I didn't have to go ahead and trim every single piece of the arc that was under the bumps. So this is just about the, this view. The, the only things that are missing are these holes, but that, those, are, those are good for the very, very end when we're gonna cut into this cone. We just wanna make that cone shape. Now, if you were to hold off on this inner pattern here until after we make the cone shape, that would have been fine too. But I just wanted to get it done and over with. Um, so let's click OK. That's probably the, the most difficult sketch in this part. I'm going to click OK. And we got it done. So now it's just a lot of extrusion. Maybe a couple, couple of circle sketches here and there. So I'll orbit. Uh, make sure, yep, here's the top. So I'm going to click on extrude and I'll extrude, I'm gonna extrude all of it, all of it, just like that. So I click, had to click on two faces and I wanna go up 0.20 as I'm seeing right here. So 0 0.2, 0 0.20, that's it for that. And what about this shape right here? How do we get that? Well, as I said earlier, thinking the loft Cool. So maybe I can make this, this circle up here at the top, which isn't really shown well. It, it's the top of this hole if you go through to the other side. So I can make that circle and then I can connect this big face of the cylinder with the smaller circle that's above it. But in order to make that circle, I'm going to have to make a new sketch plane. So we can see here from the bottom, to the top, we're calling this the top. From bottom to top, there should be a plane 0.38 from the bottom. So we can get our plane tool. You, it might be right there, but if not, it is in this list right here, plane. Right now I, I'm on the top. I'm gonna, cause I know that this new plane is gonna be 0 0.38, 0 0.38 up from the bottom. I'm gonna click on the bottom cylinder bottom of the cylinder, turn it around. Right now it's going in the wrong direction. So I'll click on this opposite direction. Now I have this new plane going up. And as I said before, it's 0.38 up from that bottom face. The center, there we go. Good. There's that plane. This is where this piece is going to lie. So now I can start a sketch right on this plane and right click, view normal to sketch plane. And as I said, we already did the hardest part of the, of the sketching. This is, we're just gonna make a circle. We're gonna make this inner circle. You can see here that this inner circle is supposed to line up with where the hole is. The bigger of these inner circles is part of that wall thickness over here. So we're gonna go with the smaller circle that has a diameter of 0.12. Inner circle going, make any size and then dimension it to be 0.12. And that's it for the sketch, end it. Uh, we can hide this plane, we don't need that plane anymore. And we'll get the loft tool. So we have extrude, revolve, sweep and a loft. So a loft between this face, this top face of the cylinder and this small circle that we made. And it's very steep, or not very steep. But there's that cone shape right there. Click OK. So now the rest of it, for the most part, is cutting into it in the way that we want. How do we go about that, though? Well, something else I mentioned earlier was we can hollow this out by using the shell tool. So what the shell tool will do is you can click on a face to cut open. In this case, as we can see over here, this bottom face right over here, 
is cut open. And then there's a consistent wall thickness, ignoring these points and bumps. There's meant to be this consistent wall thickness going all the way around. And this shell tool will allow us to have that consistent thickness all the way around. Let's have a look at what that's going to look like. Let's click on shell. Do we see a wall thickness here measured? We do not. As with the other parts, seems like it's in the notes, all wall thicknesses are 0.05. So in this case, it says shell, but basically the same idea that the shell, if you were to you know, consider it as a shell, that thickness is 0.05. And we want to remove this bottom face right here. There you go. See, now it's consistent all the way throughout. So there's a shell shape all the way through. Now that you know what that looks like, I intentionally did this. We can make things a little bit easier for ourselves making this part right here. We're not going to have to make a new plane and extrude. You can. You could make a plane that's 0.26 up from the bottom, make this ring, and then extrude it up. You could do that. That's one thing you could do. That's kind of a more straightforward way. But I think there is another way that allows us to practice the shell tool a little bit. I'm going to click on the X, pretend that didn't happen. What we could do instead is make this hole and then shell, make a shell around that. That's going to get that extra piece of wall. That's not too difficult at all. It might sound complicated, but it's not at all. So we, we will extrude this circle down to make a hole. Other direction, gotta click on other direction, remove, and we want to remove how much? So this is between here 0.38 minus 0.26. And if you don't wanna do the math on that, just type that in exactly, 0.38 minus 0.26, which is gonna end up being 0.12. Let me click OK. So now we have the hole. It is covered though, but we do have a hole. Now let's see what happens when we try the shell tool. That's right here. Again, we want our shell to be 0.05, and we click here. Now there's this big circle here, but we can remove that face just like we removed this bottom face. We can go into the hole and remove that, that face right there. And look at that, now it's perfect. We still have that 0.05 wall thickness. We have the correct height. We didn't have to do anything with making another plane or extruding, but if that's something that might be easier for you, that's there's no problem doing that as well. So we got the shell, we can click okay. There's only two parts left and for the most part, Again, they're, they're pretty straightforward. They're pretty easy. Uh, we already have these bumps and, and points here from the sketch earlier. So that was in sketch one. Let's click on show. There it is. And we'll extrude it. We'll just, it, we'll just extrude that face right here. Now I wanna make sure that it doesn't go through anything extra. So what I'll do, I don't want it to go up this high for, for one thing. But you could probably see, maybe if I, what was it before, point two, let's, let's say point 20. Okay, same height as the outer, as this outer wall. If we zoom in, what you can see, yeah, there it is. There's a bit of a shadow there, but some of it goes up to the cone. Some of it does it, so it's going to be easier or more convenient if we say up to face. We say, I want this face to extrude and stop at this cone shape right here. Good. Then we don't have to figure out any heights or deal with any slants. This will stop right at this cone face. Cool. And we're almost there. Well, now I can hide this sketch. I don't like, I don't need that. The last thing are these two holes. Easy sketch, easy extrusion. Make a sketch with those two circles and then extrude them down. So you can make this sketch, you can make it on top, you can make it on the bottom. I'll probably do it on the bottom. 
just make a sketch right on really any plane will do. Even that one's fine, but I'll do it on here. Right click, click on view normal to sketch plane. And then we can just, uh, just draw these two circles here. So and now we'll do circle tool. So it's got a Y along with, it's gonna be perfectly vertical with this center circle here. So I'm gonna make sure I'm snapping onto this dotted line and I'll click anywhere on there. I can fix that stuff later. And move it down, it doesn't matter here where it is or how big it is. We will use the dimension tool to fix this. So we have a distance, where's the distance? 0.36 is the distance between the center and of, of the whole thing and then the, the new circle we draw, that's 0.36. Oh, looks like it's symmetric actually. Let's see if we are gonna have to. Oh, no, nope, not entirely. Good. So just make sure you're dimensioning both of them, dimensioning both of the centers. And then the actual sizes of the circles, they are 0.14 diameter and that two times is saying there's two circles, so do that twice. 0.14 for the diameter and 0.14 for the diameter. Then we can end it and extrude these two circles, that one and that one. We want to not add, but remove material. And it's already done it. It's gone right up through. If it doesn't, you can make make the depth really big, or you can say through all. And so it'll definitely go through everything. Click OK. And that's it. That's the that's the cone part. But we don't just stop here. We have to put it into a drawing just like these. So we're going to click plus and create drawing. And the A inch is what we've been using, and we're going to continue using that. We're going to be using the cone. So you want to say, yep, I want to use that. And we need to insert our, the same for Skills USA. you got to try to copy it as much as possible. So I want this bottom view. Um, there's bottom, and make sure it shows up right. It is loading. That's good. It is rotated wrong, but I can rotate that correctly. I'll click down set it down and what do I have here? I have a section view and an isometric view. I'll deal with those in a moment. I'm gonna click uh, escape. I don't know if I'm still, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I can click, I can double click on this view again and then there's rotation angle. Let me move over here so I can actually see it. Uh, that's not what I want. Probably a uh, 90 degree angle, it'll be turned. Press enter, there we go. Now that's that's matching exactly. The next one we see, we have a section view and even says section. We have a cutting plane line. So we will, here, here's all of our different, oh, click, click okay. And then here's all of our different views that we can have. We can have detail views, auxiliary views, projected views. Section view is what we want. Um, is this a vertical line? Yes. So we're gonna have it be a vertical line and we're gonna show, click on where the center of that line should lie. And then I want it right there. And then we have to drag out either way, which way do we want our section view to go? We want it to lie right over here. Now, if you need to move this to make more space, there's no problem with that. We can do that uh, when the time comes, but I'm just setting it down where I need to right now. And visually, everything's coming out just fine. We even have our, our hidden lines right here. That's good. And the section name is right here as well. The last piece is the isometric view. So to get that, or if you wanted a top, well, we have our uh, bottom view. If you wanted a side view, um, front view, anything like that, you can click on projected view. So I want to project off of this view 
if you go, as you can see, going up, I get a, is it not going to do it for us? Well, you can try it for yourself as well. Uh, yeah, there's our front view. Here's a nice symmetric view. I want to try to get it looking exactly the same. Doesn't look like it's going to. Which is pretty close. Not that way. This is probably the closest we're going to get. Now it's okay if we don't get it quite right. In Inventor, it would be a little bit easier to get the right view. That's fine. So I'm going to click Escape and I'll move this to where I want. Right there is fine. So there's our isometric view. Can we fill it in? I think we tried this last time and I couldn't find it. So it will just leave it as is. So that we have our three views. We have our top, or sorry, this is the bottom view, section view, and isometric view. Before we do any dimensioning, let's make sure we fill out this. Now there's only some things we need. We need our name, the date we're drawing this, the title, we're keeping it consistent. This whole project is uh, skills USA. Oh, I forgot. I already forgot which order I did it. I can I can have a look back. Battle top toy, then skills USA 2013. So that should be battle top toy. Next line should be. I'm double clicking on these to change them. Uh, skills USA 2013. Okay, and then the drawing number, I, I'm treating that as the figure name. This figure name is Cone. Cone, good. And that is all we need. It is a size, it is two, two to one, which is, that's automatically set. So we already have all this information, which is great. Um, and we also need to rename the actual tab. So this is just like the other ones, this is cone drawing. Good. Now let's actually dimension everything, put in the notes, and then we'll print it. And that'll be this one. So we get no dimension tool going on. So what do we need? We need the, the dimension or the distance between the center circle here and where this circle is, okay, there it is. So I, I had to hover over this circle, but now that I did, I can see the center view. So I can move that up. That, that works just fine. Let me just check something. I wanna make sure, can I change? Because look, the precision is point, or it's it's two decimal places. I want to know if I can change that before I do anything else. And that's a little turning things into different objects. I'm not used to that yet. What's that? Create version? No. Manage history. Workspace units. Link display. Oh, I did this earlier. I did this in the last one and it didn't, nope, didn't let me do it. Maybe if I, maybe if I click escape. Well, it's right here. To change the actual precision, you click on the, on the little arrow next to the, on the dimension. And you can say, I want it to be two decimal spaces like that. And the other thing to do in these is here's where you can put information in the front. Here it's saying, oh, we have 24 cases of, of 0.45 distances away. So that's what this is, 24x. And then you can see here, there needs to be a little bit of space. You want these to look as much like the original drawing as possible. Let's look out of that. There's our dimension. Uh, we, have, we have an angular dimension here. 
you can click on dimension or you can find the, the more specific one. Sometimes that's a little bit easier. I want long, line to line angular dimension because we're making an angle. So between, oh, well, that's, that's not very helpful, is it? Because now we don't actually have that ability right now. Maybe I can do from here to here to here. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted. So that's not the right angle either. It's supposed to be 15 degrees, right? I think I made the, I think with, um, so I can click on dimension. Here's what we're going to do to get that angular dimension. I believe we're going to click on the two vertices of the angle. And then the, or the two endpoints of the angle, and then the vertex, the point that's in the middle. I think we click on that third. No, that's still not quite right. Can we draw any lines? Yeah, here, let's, maybe what we need to do is draw the actual center points first. So here's two point center point, two point center line, excuse me. So I'll click there and I'll draw another one right here. And now let's see if I can actually do the line to line angular point. Yep, here we go. Now we can actually click. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want there. Good. I can come back and edit these as needed later. Or I guess it, uh, you can double click on it now, say, oh, I want 24 of these and some spaces. Precision needs to be no decimal places, zero. So it's exactly the same. And we'll just keep going. So that angle was a little bit of a pain, but we got it. Uh, we need to do regular dimension again between the center of that circle, the center of that circle. We can pull that out over here. We'll fix some of these later. The diameter of this circle I can throw down there. The diameter of this circle I can throw right down here. Now, if it's not going to look exactly the same, that's okay. For example, and maybe, maybe what we could do is, because it gave us radius, maybe we can click on, there should be a diameter one. There's diameter dimension. That should get us exactly what we want. We do have to make sure, to the best of our ability, if we're asked to put in a diameter dimension, we put in a diameter dimension. Now, if there's not two arrows, that should be fine. Uh, we do have this inner circle as well for the diameter. Do we have everything there? No, well, just one more. The diameter of this. Oh, they're asking for the radius. So here, I'm going to click out of there and click on radial dimension, then on that circle again, and then I can set that down. I think I got everything for this bottom view, and then there's not too many on the, on the section view. As I said earlier, I can move this, and I think I will. I want to move that over so I have a little bit more space. Uh, maybe this one as well. And then section views down, or the section name is down here. I'm move that down out of the way of the dimensions. So once again, we need the dimension. We'll, uh, we'll try dimension tool, see if we can get everything that we need from that. From top to bottom, top to very bottom right there. I'll extend that out to here. You can see we don't have the diameter to, uh, symbol in there yet. We do need that. We'll put that in when we go back and fix everything. So now we have more dimensions going on. We have from, it looks like between these two points, that was that extrusion that we made closer uh, when, when we made that cylinder. And then the distance between the bottom and the bottom of the hole, bottom of the cylinder and the bottom of the hole, we need that as well. 
and then it looks like one more, the bottom of the cylinder and the very top of the cone where the hole is. Pull that out right there. Good, that looks like everything it with the exception of the notes and we are we're, we're not going to put in the geometric tol tolerancing right now we'll leave that alone or any of these um these symbols so i just need to now uh, i'll click escape and i'm gonna I, i'm clicking on everything clicking on all the dimensions oh what happened i'm gonna hold control just to make sure that I can actually, uh, what is happening here? I think it's thinking that I'm trying to double click. There we go. All right, that's getting a pain. So it looks like if you accidentally hover over that, that plus or minus 0 0.1 symbol that keeps coming up, you're gonna end up in the editing view early there now i've selected everything you can do it one by one if you want i'm going to hover over that you can see it varies because all of these have different dimensions you can change this to oh you're not going to let me do it huh let me just make sure i'll do a couple at a time change that there we go now i can change it to two decimal places probably because i specified that i want that one to be zero all these ones, I want to be two decimal places. Good. What else do I need now? Got the 0.97, we got all that. Oh, this one, we have two cases of circles with diameter 0.14. So I'm going to go in here in front of this di diameter symbol. I'll do two X and give a couple spaces. Click out of there. Uh, over here, two cases of that distance here. So two X, I think, uh, oops, so X is good on it. Two spaces should be fine. If you want to do three, that's okay too. I think, oh, and this one, this radius, we need to put 24 X in front of it. We'll do two spaces. Okay, now I've got everything on this side. Uh, on the bottom view and in the section view, I have to put in the diameter symbol. Don't need that. Come on. I'm gonna, can I press there? Don't. Just trying to get out of there. I just want to put in the diameter symbol. There it is. And click out of there. That's good. And these are all good too. Good. So we can finish off with putting in the notes. Well, with these ones, looks like you can actually copy and paste. I didn't do that before. You can put in note right down here is fine. I think you can just copy and paste it. You want it to look exactly the same. Perfect. Nice and easy. Okay, escape that. And this is it. This is your working drawing of the cone. So in order to print it, do have to print it. Uh, we need to do, how do I forget already? There we go, print. And here it is. There is your working drawing. So you can click on, I'm going to move myself. There's the download button at the top right. So down, download that, and then you can submit that as needed along with your other drawings if you haven't already. But that's it for today. That's Or that's it for this video, at least. I hope you had fun. And I'll see you next time when we make this ratchet is going to be kind of a fun one. So see you then.